the best response you can have to a payoff in a thriller is someone goes, oh, right, I forgot, of course, I should have paid oh, this. Fun Story offers a look inside the creative process from today's leading writers, creators, and filmmakers. All of our content is recorded live at Austin Film Festival and at our year-round events. To view previous episodes, visit OnStory.tv. OnStory is brought to you in part by the Alice Kleberg Reynolds Foundation, a Texas family providing innovative funding since 1979. Support for OnStory comes from Bogle Family Vineyards, sixth generation farmers and third generation winemakers, creating sustainably grown wines that are a reflection of the Bogle family values since 1968. From Austin Film Festival, this is On Story, a look inside the creative process from today's leading writers, creators, and filmmakers. This week's On Story, love and basketball creator, Gina prince Bythewood. I love a great love story. I, I love the feeling of being wrecked and then built back up. I feel like the great love stories make you ache. You should feel that in the writing process. You should feel it on the page. In this episode, award-winning director, writer, and producer Gina prince Bythewood talks about her character-driven work in The Old Guard, Love and Basketball, and Beyond the Lights. How has this year been for you, of course, with The Old Guard? An amazing big project. Congratulations on just massive success with that. It's been fascinating. It's been <laughs> exciting. It's been sad. Um, all those things. I feel very blessed that I was able to get two audience previews in before the COVID shutdown. So I got to see the old guard in front of an audience on a big screen. Yeah, I was one of the few films that was able to come out. Um, I was excited about this year of, of so many films in the genre being directed by women and women of color. It felt like a watershed year and, and then suddenly so many of our films having to be put on the shelf for a while. But the fact that this was on Netflix, it did have the opportunity to get into the world. And, and it was, you know, it was an amazing time to, to, have, to have that many people watch your work. That first day when it dropped in 190 countries on the same day, you, you can't even wrap your head around that. I'm curious, something that has stuck out to me upon rewatching so many of your different films and series is the depth and power that all of your characters seem to have and convey. Um, certainly your um, female characters, especially. I, I absolutely take pride in creating characters. I mean, it's, it's so much a part of the writing process. And for me, once I have the idea of what I want to write, the story, the themes, then it's about characters. And... I spend so much time on every single character. And for me, it's about making them real um, because when they're real, then they, they start to talk to me as I'm writing. It's a, it's a very cool thing of getting into that <laughs> flow. I mean, I feel like now I'm asking you to pick your, between your kids or something here, but is there um, any particular moment or any particular character for you that really sort of stuck out and you even now till this day think of that sort of connection throughout the uh, creative process or development process you know i certainly there's been a couple moments that have stayed with me you know for noni certainly one of the first images that came to me as i was creating beyond the lights was noni hanging off of a balcony um so that 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 was a big one and because so much of it was you know, how, how do you love someone who who wants to die, who, who doesn't love themselves? And also, how can someone come back from that moment, from wanting to die to understanding to choose life? Noni? What's going on? Can you 
you look at me for a second? Please. Please. You still can't see me. Noni is just an amazing performance by Gugu and Bathara, and also just a, a character that you want to see evolve and grow, and you feel for her throughout all the pain and all the struggles. Um, you, you mentioned watching someone as her her character developing someone who's at the brink of death and really um, wanting to give up and then choosing life. What's fascinating about Beyond the Lights, the journey to get it made, and I've been you know, very open about how hard it was. The majority of studios who loved the script and loved the writing pointed to the fact that the suicide attempt happens within the first 10 minutes and kept asking me, can I take that out? Um, because an audience will not get past that. Where for me, that is the story. I want to see that journey. How can we go from a woman hanging off a balcony, literally okay with letting go how do we get to her at the end in such a triumphant uh moment it was really about a woman who, able to break free to find her own voice have the courage to do that um, especially when the forces you know pushing against that were so personal her mother her own mother i find that relationship fascinating it was certainly based on things that i read to Two biographies were probably the most influential. I wrote, I read a biography on um, Marilyn Monroe and uh, and uh, Judy Garland, and their relationships with their mothers were horrifying. But I, I found that fascinating. That what, how can a relationship like that exist when your livelihood or sense of worth is based on your child and the things that you would, have, things that would cloud your moral judgment or your maternal judgment to maintain um, that success. I, I found that a fascinating dynamic. And Gugu and I, we just talked a lot about the depths of what Noni would be in. And we did a lot of research and a lot of stuff on suicide and, and people talking about how they felt in that moment. That line uh, that Noni says after breaking all the glass and in her apartment that came directly out of research, that level of loneliness and and uh despair and uh you know we just really we really dug into that blackbird the song by nina simone was so influential obviously to creating the piece and crafting the character but it also has such specific moments with it throughout the course of the film itself i was looking for a nina simone song because that just felt right for this character. And Nina Simone is always on my writing playlist just because she evokes such emotion, you know, when you listen to her. And in the original draft, Noni was singing an original song of hers um, in Mexico. Like that was the whole thing. She's always writing a song and then she has the courage to sing her own song. Um, I heard the song Blackbird and kind of thunderstruck. It felt like this was literally written for the movie and hence the title because the movie was originally called Blackbird. Um, as soon as I heard the song, I, it just changed the trajectory of the script. And then suddenly, wait, this is what she's singing as a little girl. And this is what she's trying to get back to. Why you wanna fly, Blackbird? You ain't ever gonna fly. I love using songs for score, and this was a song that so spoke to the character and allowed me to, you know, just, just get an audience into her head um, and also into the emotion of, of what she was feeling by a song and being able to have this song come up a couple times in, in the story and use it in different ways um, was exciting to me. Where do you find yourself being able to pull from and how do you find yourself being able to pull from life experiences and really translate that to the page and translate that to characters and then bring an audience a world over into that space as well? As a writer, you have to have the courage to dig deep within yourself, to recognize sometimes things that are not so great about yourself 
and explore that. You pull from your life or pull from things that you've seen or experienced. And I think that's what gives moments truthfulness. Do you find yourself also growing with how you perceive those characters and their experiences as you create more distance from their release and putting them out in the world? Or do they sort of just live with you or sit with you? Everything I write is pouring myself into it and also oftentimes writing is great therapy. So kind of using them to work through things that I may be going <laughs> through. And the characters are, are, when I've created them, they are, they are real and what they're going through is real. And so I feel like that's why for me, they, they stand the test of time for me when I look back on it. What I find fascinating certainly is um, how through the years, some people's perceptions of the characters have changed given, you know, social changes, political changes, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But I know what I was thinking or or wanted to put or wanted to convey in that moment. And that none of that has changed despite, um, you know, some coming at the characters a little differently or, or perceiving them in ways that is just not intended, nor do I <laughs> think is true, truthful. But, you know, again, we're artists, we put work into the world to hopefully be embraced, but also judged. With regards to Beyond the Lights, I'm so fascinated by the overall film, by the construct of it, by the narrative, certainly by the characters on and on. Um, but to start in a particular place, I find it has a unique connection to Love and Basketball, both films about romance, and both films that I feel has a touch of tragedy elements in them with regards to their overall um, arcs. Can you just speak to working within that space and um, what the freedom and love for you personally may be working within the romance space and pushing it to its furthest bounds? I love a great love story. I, I love the feeling of being wrecked and then built back up. And, you know, for me, I feel like the great love stories make you ache. So when you're writing, that, that means that the conflicts are real um, that they never feel contrived, that they are, are big enough where you believe that these two people are just, they can't find each other and you're just yearning, aching for these two people to come back together. I'll play you. What? One game, one on one. <laughs> for what? Your heart. You should feel that in the writing process. You should feel it on the page. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I love that. I love being in that, that space of creating two people, two characters that I love, and, and getting them back together. And the thing with the love story, there's only two ways it's going to work out. Either they're going to end up together or they're not. So it's about the journey and creating a journey that an audience wants to go on. I certainly do have, I'm saying formula, but it's not. I don't think that's the right word, but I do believe uh, for me watching a love story, I'm more engaged when I'm following both characters. That it's not like a guy who's in love with a girl and her character is secondary. If I know them both equally and I'm rooting for them both equally, um, I'm just more invested. And I think it makes the story stronger as well. And then also it can't just be about love it can't just be about their love story there has to be outside elements or else you are just creating these contrived um obstacles that anybody knows they're just going to hop over your projects have such a unique um, thread to them with regards to legacy and lineage, specifically looking at love and basketball, the relationship between Monica and her mom, and then fast forwarding to the old guard, you have Andy as someone who's lived for so many years, she can't even necessarily speak to how many that may be and what her impact has had literally on the entire world. What are you so fascinated by as a creator in that sort of idea or those themes. Our childhoods affect who we are as an adult. The fact that so many of us can't get over things that happen in our childhood, how much it influences who we are as an adult. And also, you know, this this thing of do we have a purpose? What is our purpose? That's a huge question that, that, that uh, I ask of myself often. And that's what attracted me so much to Andy and, and all of the old guard is um, but certainly Andy and then 
Niall when, when she becomes a part of them. I think you showed up when I lost my immortality. So I could see what it was like. So I could remember. Remember? Remember what it... What it was like to feel unbreakable. <laughs> Remarkable. You reminded me there are people still worth fighting for. I know how I want to spend the time I've got left. You know, Greg Rucka, who's such an incredible writer, um, who wrote the graphic novels and and uh, then the screenplay, you know, that's what we talked about so much is that thing of, of purpose and finding your purpose. And um, again, I think that that's such a universal theme and it didn't matter that these characters were essentially immortal. I felt that I knew that the way I wanted to bring him into the world in a real grounded way, I wanted an audience to be able to connect with him despite the fantastical conceit. And that that desire to know your purpose, to find your purpose, I felt was something um, that no, you know, the way that I connected with it so, so strongly, I felt that an audience could as well. What was it like to work on that project with those um, pieces in mind? And was it a constant thing for you where that was just an undercurrent of a driving force behind a lot of um, the impact of what you're trying to do with the film? I think it started, honestly, their absolute ties from Love and Basketball to the old guard in terms of Monica. You know, I, the way I grew up and being an athlete, my parents had me in sports when I was five. So from that age all the way, you know, through college, that was my existence. And so the women around me um, were athletes as well. And it's just a different mentality. And it's, it's a mentality that most girls do not grow up with. You love the fact that you are skilled at something. You, you love your athleticism. Um, you understand what it means to outwork somebody, to, to go after a win, to leave it all out on the floor, to have stamina like all these lessons, and also that you are innately athletic, innately a warrior. You want to win, you want to fight. That is in us, but as girls, we are just not taught that. So to be able to put that on screen for girls and, and women, to be able to see themselves in that way that they, they may have not been taught is certainly absolutely a, a theme of my work and, and something that I am very intentional about. Old Guard, as soon as I read Greg's script, that's what I loved so much about it. There was no traumatic experience that happened to these women that, that forced them to become warriors. They became the old guard, most likely because this was innately in them. With regards to Andy and working with uh, Charlize Theron on that character, uh, were there specific things you knew you wanted to adapt directly from the novel? Skydance are the ones that, that bought the, the novel and, and they developed it for a year with Greg. And it was in really good shape when I came aboard. And then there were some things I wanted to do with it that Greg was 100% on board with. So it was a great collaboration. And most of the work happened during that time of really um, understanding these characters, making sure their drives were clear, making sure this thing of purpose was really elevated, um, certainly giving Niall uh, more agency uh, throughout the story really elevating her her need of wanting to get back to her family and um, and really questioning why this was happening to them because the old guard had stopped questioning. I got people that love me, people that are gonna worry. I'm a marine. They think I went AWOL. They're not a marine anymore. They're going to lock you up. You know, the character, and certainly Andy, um, you know, that character is the character that was on those graphic novel pages um, that I certainly, it's interesting, I went back to the graphic novel after I read the script. Like, she's she's a dope character. 
like she is she is all there and so you know i think the the biggest question um in terms of once we decided to catch our lease was yeah in talking with their like you can't play in age you can't play six thousand years um <laughs> and you just kind of think about who you are like for me I still feel like I'm 22. Like that number is just maybe because that was a great year of my life. I don't know, but you know, you just don't feel your age, and so it's really you. You are, you are your experiences. You're the oldest. Yeah. Well, how old are you? Old. How old? Too old. Where did you find sort of the impetus to bring a motherly, um, mother-daughter relationship from completely different perspectives with completely different character motivations and desires to the table? Yeah, certainly with Old Guard, the thing that I wanted to bring to the Andy Now relationship was a veteran rookie relationship. I just felt that that conceit was kind of funny to do with an immortal and a baby immortal. <laughs> you know, I didn't want it to be about that, but that's certainly the the relationship that developed and influenced the way that when Greg and I kind of were attacking some scenes really helped us shape because we knew that that was a dynamic um, that we wanted to bring out. You think knowing is gonna make you sleep better at night? I can't be that. My family, they're gonna get old and I won't. But it'll be years before they realize that I still have time with them. Here. Take the car. And when you ditch it, ditch the weapons. You gonna be okay? Always. That, that's the, the beauty of writing and then directing is relationships. That's what stories, that's what we're connecting to as an audience. So to create those different dynamics within relationships are, are what cause conflict and emotion and uh, all the good stuff that we want out of film. You have Noni as someone that is bombarded by uh, media as a star. Uh, you have in the old guard, these characters are fearful of media or any sort of uh, revelations, if you would, about their existence within the world. It, it's it's dueling in, in a way, but also you have such a unique perspective and vantage point on both of those uh, sides of the coin, if you would. Certainly with Beyond the Lights, um, I was really fascinated by what I saw was a blueprint that was happening most, most definitely with young black female artists where you had to come out hypersexualized to make noise, make a name. Yet then it felt like you were then trapped in that persona. And anytime you tried to break free from that, you were then called inauthentic as opposed to maybe what you came out with was inauthentic. And the way that again, the way that you come out, that is that becomes your image, and that is your image on social media and in videos and in you know commercials and in TV and I, to it just locks you in. That's what social media. That's what media does. It locks you into a persona, and that fascinates me. Really, all your films, even without overtly hitting this on the head manage to tackle mental health, mental wellness in some sort of way. As someone who also was a very high level athlete and now is a writer, um, what, what about bringing, shedding a light on those realities and just sharing characters who are living within those different spaces and mindsets is really um, exciting or interesting to you? There's a piece of me in, in every one of those characters. And so it really is, exploring something that, that I that I was going through at that time. And so, but I also, I think that that's what I hope will make every film or project I do feel a little different um, because I'm dealing with a different element within myself. Um, and for me, I hope that I never feel like I'm repeating myself, even though there may be themes, certainly that, that traverse my work, um, I think searching for purpose, searching for your voice. Um, it's, it's something that I do return to because 
I think it certainly as an artist is something you're always struggling with. Um, so I think I think that's what draws me. You've been watching a conversation with Gina Prince Bodwood on On Story. On Story is part of a growing number of programs in Austin Film Festival's On Story project that also includes the On Story radio program, podcast, book series, and the On Story archive, accessible through the Whitliff Collections at Texas State University. To find out more about On Story and Austin Film Festival, visit onstory.tv or austinfilmfestival.com. Want to see On Story live? Join us at Austin Film Festival's annual Writers Conference each October. Visit www.austinfilmfestival.com to find out more about badges and passes to attend the festival.